Hello, I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of quantum mechanics 1 with the course code PHY212, we are at the lecture number 13 and the topic is measurements in quantum mechanics. The idea of measurements in quantum mechanics is quite different than the idea of measurements in classical mechanics. The reason is that the measuring apparatus in quantum mechanics actually interferes with the physical observable which is to be measured. And this interference actually shifts the state of a system to the next state. And this new state system remains there until a new measurement is made. In order to clarify this, I divide and break this whole thing into small parts. In the first part, I tell you if we make a measurement of an observable, let us say this observable is uh, denoted by a symbol A and this observable could be any physical quantity, for example, a linear momentum. So, consider that you have a physical system consisting of only one particle, let us say electron, then the linear momentum of this electron is a physical observable. And we can also have a position of this electron which is also a physical observable. So, when we make a measurement of this physical observable let us say of linear momentum, then what we get it yields us a value which we call an eigenvalue. Let us say this eigenvalue is A. Now, what happens that this measurement leaves this uh, system into this new state which is denoted by phi A. So, now this is a wave function or state function but it is determined from the eigenvalue A of this physical observable. And the system will remain there unless and until a new measurement is made and new transformation is also made. But the thing is that, that when a measurement is made, the system is changed to this new state which is defined by this eigenvalue and now it is certain and it will remain there. And new measurement of let us say uh, of, uh, of another uh, observable uh, of or any other operator acting on it will not change it. Now, this uh, state is actually the eigenfunction of uh, this operator phi a and this is the corresponding operator to this linear uh, uh, to this observable physical observable. So, we can go uh, in reverse order as well that is that this operator actually acts on this function and moves it to wave function or eigen function and moves it to the state phi a uh, giving us the value eigen value a of this physical observable. Now, the system will remain in, in this state. Okay. Now, I would like to give you uh, one concrete example let us say of position measurement. So, when we make a measurement of a position let us say for a free particle, a particle where there are no forces acting on it, uh, we will get the eigen value denoted by x prime. So, this x prime is the eigenvalue of the position. Now, since we have eigenvalue, we must have an eigenvalue equation or this is an operator equation. And here you can see in this here that we have x hat, this is the position operator acting on the position uh, wave function. This position wave function is actually a Dirac delta function. And when this position operator acts on it, it is defined by its action that is it just multiplies the eigenvalue with the delta function. So, this is the eigenvalue and this whole is the eigenvalue equation. Now, this, uh, this uh, uh, system will remain in this new state here, uh, it is an eigenstate, uh, but it is corresponding to this eigenvalue. Now, a little bit about this eigen function which is a Dirac delta function. It is not really a function, but Dirac use it in order to uh, justify this equation. So, Dirac delta function is some sort of a function which is uh, uh, defined by having a maximum value at uh, origin or at the uh, center position and have no value or value 0 at other position. So, for example, this epsilon is a small parameter. So, when you move from this uh, center to the right or to the left, the value of the delta function decreases. So, it has a 0 value everywhere else, but maximum value at the uh, center. And uh, since uh, any mathematical function is uh, not defined this to have uh, uh, all the value on one position, Dirac defined this new function which is that is why I called Dirac delta function. 
and we use this Dirac delta function as an eigen function for the position operator. So, Dirac delta function by definition is having two properties. So, it has two defining properties and these are given in terms of integrals. The first property is actually sometimes called shifting properties where if we have some function at x prime and this function is uh, actually transferred let us say to the next position x or uh, another position x with the help of this Dirac delta function but under the integral and associated with this is uh, is uh, this another integral uh, which is the uh, integral of a Dirac delta function as, as you can see that its value is 1. So, this first property of Dirac delta function it is, is its defining property and we will use it to derive many interesting properties uh, for the uh, eigenfunction of position. The another property of this Dirac uh, the defining property the second property of this Dirac delta function is that value value of Dirac delta function delta y is equal to uh, 0. Uh, for any y which is not equal to 0 this delta delta of y is equal to 0. So, uh, these two properties are actually the defining properties the previous one this property here and it is not defined in terms of uh, only a single variable, but we can define it in terms of single variable as well uh, as we have defined over here in terms of a single variable. Now, these two properties will be used uh, for deriving uh, many interesting uh, properties of Dirac delta function. As an example, I show over here if we want to derive that y is equal to uh, delta prime y is equal to minus delta y, we will use these two properties defining properties of Dirac delta function to derive this. So, uh, in the first case you can see here that uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, f of y y del prime y dy uh, which is actually this del is actually the derivative with respect to y, this can be written as minus this term. Uh, so, if uh, by product rule we act on all of them. So, the two uh, uh, are over here, but uh, the one which is missing is subtracted. So, uh, the derivative of uh, delta with respect to y is over here and these two uh, f and y two quantities lying outside. So, since uh, we, uh, uh, in this case we also have to take derivative of f and y uh, which is not in the left side that is why I subtracted it from here. And in the next step you see uh, that we can write uh, this function delta y uh, uh, in terms of uh, here uh, uh, like this as well. You can understand it uh, from the above that when you expand this some of terms will be cancelled and this will be left over here and then uh, this this is reducing to it and if you cancel the uh, same properties uh, same quantities on the both sides you will be left uh, with this derivation this quantity over here. So, you see that defining the um, using the defining properties of Dirac delta function we have actually derived uh, this uh, one of the uh, properties of Dirac uh, delta function. So, in this lecture we have seen that um, so far that we have uh, 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 measuring uh, uh, quite different than classical mechanics here measurement actually shifts the state of a system uh, to the new state and the particle uh, new state is defined by the eigenvalue coming from the uh, operator. Thank you very much.